Hello, welcome. Good evening, uh, good afternoon, uh, depending on um, where are you connecting from. My name is Jakub Nowakowski. I'm the re director of the Cape Town Holocaust and Genocide Center, and it is my pleasure and honor to welcome all of you um, this uh, evening during um, the panel discussion, uh, not entirely forgotten, um, devoted to the Jewish um, victims of the cutting massacre. Um, before, mm -hmm. I'll, um, before I'll introduce all of our guests and give the floors to uh, give the floor to our uh, speakers, um, I'd like to say a few words about this this um, reason why we're here. Um, the, the cutting massacre um, took place in April and May of 1940. Um, it happened after the outbreak of the first world, after the second world war. As you'll all know, September 1st, Poland was invaded, attacked by the Germans from west. Um, on the 17th of September, Poland was attacked um, from the east by the Soviet Russia. Um, after the end of the fighting, um, Soviet secret police quickly started to arrest the intelligentsia elite, but also um, prisoners of war, uh, soldiers um, who were um, kept in camps. Um, what happened later was uh, killing. Um, by the order of uh, Stalin, Joseph Stalin, um, uh, approximately 22,000 um, Polish uh, officers, intelligentsia elite, uh, were shot to death in the forests um, uh, and, and in uh, Forest of Cutting and other places. Um, among them, among those uh, that were killed were also Polish Jews. Um, and uh, while for uh, for uh, the post-war time until Poland uh, regained independence in 1989 and 1990 and became a democratic country, the story of cutting and story of cutting victims would not be officially recognized in this communist Poland. Um, the um, perpetrators, the Soviet Russia, and again, the communist government was not interested in, in um, discussing this crime. Um, so the, the victims were forgotten by, by the uh, perpetrators, which is not a surprise. Um, in the Polish narration, of course, in the underground Polish nar narration, the Soviet crime was not forgotten. It was discussed. It was illegally commemorated. But in the Polish narration, there was no room for the Jewish victims. As among those that were killed, there were hundreds of Polish Jews killed by the Soviets, not because of their Jewishness, not because of their ethnicity or religion, but because they belong to the elite of the country that the Russians, uh, the Soviets were uh, trying to um, get rid of. Um, so in this Polish narration, the Jews were forgotten for the second time. Um, and it is also in the uh, forgotten. Um, first of all, because um, most of their families were killed in the Holocaust. So there were very little of those that survived to remember, to commemorate, to mourn. Um, after the end of the, the, the war, the 22,000 um, victims of the cutting massacre were also um, became um, overshadowed by the much larger uh, number of six million killed in the Holocaust. Um, so in, in this program, not entirely forgotten, we want to bring back the memory of memory of those victims, of those Polish Jews that were killed by the Soviets in 1940 in the forest of Katyn. Um, and I'm extremely grateful to our um, partners uh, and uh, participants of this discussion, uh, without whom this, this program would not be possible. Um, so um, I'll start with, uh, with our partners, um, uh, Tallinn Aids uh, from the Johannesburg Holocaust and Genocide Center, uh, Marie Kluck from the Durban Holocaust and, um, and Genocide Center, uh, and the Polish uh, Embassy in Pretoria, um, thank you all for joining us in uh, organ organization of this very special um, uh, evening. And now um, I'd like to ask Tallinn uh, a chairperson, chairwoman of the uh, South African Holocaust and Genocide Foundation, but also chairperson of the Council of the Cutting Foundation, Families of Jewish Origin, 
uh, and we'll speak more about that foundation to say a few words. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Kuba. Thank you very much to all that are part of today's very important first time in South Africa event. It is uh, an honor to work with uh, Luke Albinski for many years on uh, issues of memory, and it is an important uh, event today because, of course, generally, uh, as uh, Kuba already spoke about, the Katyn massacre is remembered in the last 20 to 30 years. However, there are gaps in this story and why the South African Holocaust and Genocide Center and the Kantin Foundation is interested in the story is because of our responsibility to recognize those gaps. Um, let's speak a little bit about memory because this is really important. And in this case, it can really shine a light on many other cases of such lack of recognition, historical recognition and memory recognition of the past. We many times say, and, and actually Kuba now spoke about the fact that the 22,000 elite uh, officers and others were murdered in Katyn and in other mass graves in the, the, the region. Um, they were remembered, even if it was for many years um, sort of under the radar, However, one group of, of about 400 Jewish officers were not remembered. I'm not saying forgotten, because in order to forget, you need to first remember. They were never remembered. So they were not remembered. So now the Katyn Foundation and the three centers in South Africa, the South African Holocaust and Genocide Center, took it upon themselves to actually recognize those victims. Uh, and this is one case of such effort that we do. Uh, and if you, our friends that are joining many of our in-person or online um, offerings, you know that many times we speak about the complicated me memory, layers of memory. And today is one of those occasions. Um, it is important for us to, uh, to speak about it, and it's so important for us to work with people such as um, Ambassador Borokovsky, the ambassador of, uh, of Poland to South Africa, and with people like Luke Albinski that took it upon himself to, to really work on making us all remember. Uh, we are also extremely uh, uh, grateful to so many descendants that are here with us today. And I see in uh, the participants list some that I know their parents, grandparents were either deported uh, to Siberia and other places, uh, parents, grandparents that were killed in Katyn and in other places. And of course, uh, dear Giora Barnier, whose father was killed uh, in, in Katyn. I want to recognize all of them and thank you all for, for coming and joining us in learning together about this very unknown piece of history. Thank you very much, um, Tali. Um, so now, um, unfortunately, Ambassador, Amba, Ambassador Burakovsky couldn't be with us in person, but he has sent a pre-recorded message, uh, we, which, we'll, which we will play now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adam Burakowski. I'm the ambassador of Poland to South Africa. Um, welcome to the seminar on Katyn Massacre organized by the Holocaust and Genocide Centers of Cape Town, Johannesburg and Durban. I'd like to express my gratitude to Director Jakub Nowakowski and Mr. Luke Albinski who made it possible. The Katyn Massacre was one, is one of the most tragic events of uh, Polish history of 20th century. After the invasion of Poland by Nazi Germany, the Soviets attacked Poland from the east. They captured 
uh, more than half of our territory uh, and introduce uh, communist terror to, um, to this land. They deported several hundreds of thousands of people to Siberia and they also captured um, several thousands of uh, Polish officers. Then Stalin decided to murder these prisoners of war. And uh, in Katyn and in uh, a few other places uh, in the area, they murdered more than 20,000 Polish officers. Uh, we, these people were not only officers, they were uh, members of the intellectual elite of the country. So this massacre uh, was a major blow against Polish society, against Polish nation. Then the Soviets tried to manipulate, to hide the truth, but uh, because of the Polish researchers, Polish politicians, and also our allies, we discovered the scale of this massacre. Every year we commemorate the Katyn massacre and uh, we need to learn this, learn this lesson, how to prevent uh, our country from being invaded and how to fight for the truth. Nowadays we see what Russia is committing in Ukraine. Um, we should stand with Ukraine and uh, we should help them to fight against Russia. The lesson learned from Katyn massacre should be repeated to the next generations. Thank you very much. Um, so let me once again thank, uh, express my thanks to Ambassador Burakowski and the Polish uh, Embassy in Pretoria for um, joining us in that very recognition. Um, and now um, the most important part, um, we, we couldn't um, do this program if not for our excellent speakers and very special uh, men. Um, and it is now my pleasure to introduce uh, both of them. Uh, Mr. Giora Barnier. Um, in, uh, known in Poland as Jerzy Rabiner, uh, was born in Warsaw in 1936. He has few precious memories of his father, Emil Emanuel Rabiner, um, born in 1907 and killed in 1940. Uh, officer in the Polish army who left home when Giora was free to fight in the Polish army against the Germans and the Russians. Um, he led a platoon of Polish uh, sappers. Um, Emil was subsequently interned by the Soviets in Starobielsk, uh, became a prisoner of war and was murdered in Katyn. Giora himself survived the Warsaw Ghetto. Um, he escaped in 1943 at the age of uh, six to live on the so-called Aryan side of Warsaw before ending up in a village called Ruda Osh near Radzimin under a false identity. After the war, Giora spent time in Warsaw and Łódź in the care of an uncle and a family friend from uh, his time in a ghetto before emigrating to France where he spent two years in the orphanage. In 1948, he left for Israel, arriving at the age of 12 during the War of Independence uh, in his new homeland. Um, Giora, with his late friend Janina Goldhar, uh, worked on developing a list of all the Polish Jewish officers that were killed in Katyn. Uh, with some persistent effort, he also got Yad Vashem to recognize uh, the Katyn victims. Uh, Giora, thank you so much for joining us um, this evening from, from Israel. Um, our second uh, guest um, uh, is Luke Albinski. Um, Luke Albinski is based in Johannesburg and was brought up in a Catholic household and he only learned about his Jewish origins at the age of early 20s. Uh, this actually started a journey of discovery, which led to his collaboration with Tallinn Aids at the Johannesburg Holocaust and Genocide Center in writing a book about his family history, uh, as well as uh, co-production of a documentary, which will soon be screened at several film festivals in the US. Uh, and also to in helping translating and editing a book about the doctors of the Warsaw Ghetto, which was authored by Maria Cieszelska. Uh, and 
Finally, recently it was Luke Albiński who set up a foundation to commemorate more than 400 Polish Jewish officers, officers uh, murdered uh, in Katyn by the uh, Soviet secret police, the NKV there. Um, Giora, um, Luke, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this, um, this evening um, and for um, helping us to remember or to bring back the memory of those that yes, were killed. Yes. In 1940. Just, just a minute. Firstly, I want to show you the picture of my father in in Polish uniform. Yeah. yeah I have another picture of his uh, diploma from uh, Ghent, Belgium, but, but that's after. Hmm. So, what's the question? Thank you. Uh um, so, so let's let's start um, as a part of of the work of the foundation. Um, um, there was a number of short videos, interviews that were made, and we will actually start uh, with this, the first video, uh, which includes uh, which tells a bit of the story of of uh, Giora and his father. Please let me know if there is any troubles. Sylwetkę mojego ojca, to co ja mogę, głowy, to ja pamiętam, ja nie wiem, możliwe, że to jest jakaś fantazja, ale to co ja pamiętam. My jesteśmy na dworcu i widocznie to oni jedzie na wojnę. To co słucham, to są takie, wiem, czy wszystkiego czy trzy lata, Czy odbierza, czy ja nie, nie wiem. To nie widziałem, znaczy nie pamiętam tego. No, to na pewno coś się, sta, coś się stało, ale ja tego nie pamiętam. Ja wiem o tym, że był, yy, był podporucznikiem, coś takiego, ja tam, że tak się mówi, to jest ta jego ranga. I on był komendantem plutonów saperów, yy, mosty. To o tym to ja wiem, bo to jest tak napisane. Znaczy, ja to znaczy, e, znalazłem w, w internecie to wszystko, bo co do tego, to ja o tym nie wiedziałem, ale na tych książkach, w listy, te różne listy katyńskie, nie ta pierwsza, bo tam jest tylko napisane rabiner, to na, na te różne książki jest napisane, że on był komendantem plutonu, saperów, e, mosty. Jak przyszedłem? O, to jest very long story, bardzo długi, no, tak, ale po prostu to byłem w Warszawie, w różnych miejscach. W jednym miejscu to było za, w jakimś takim, byłem taki jakiś, jak, nie wiem, jak powiedzieć to, dawali mi jeść tam jak do, do, do psa i były tam książki i było trochę światła. To ja już widziałem, po prostu mama, mama, moja mama w gecie nauczyła się, na, nauczyła mi polskie, ja po, po, polskiego i francuskiego. W 1934 roku byłem na wsi, koło e, Ruda Łoś, no, to było koło Kodek, mi dal, e, moje imię było Władysław Piotrowicz. Dlaczego Władysław Piotrowicz? Nie wiem, ale to, to, to co mi dali, byłem władkiem także. I tam byłem jakieś około 8, 8 miesięcy, jak Rosjanie później że wzięli te, te, tą, te miejsce. I byłem u niego jeszcze, jeszcze jakieś dwa miesiące i później on wziął mnie do Warszawy, do mojego wójta z powrotem. Oni mieszkali na Grochów, na Grochowie, na ulicy Czapelskiej. Do dzisiaj ta jest ten dom, tam na Czapelska 32. I później z, no, nawet do Łodzi, jakaś, jakaś, jakaś nasza sąsiadka z getta, pani Irena Wundheiler, chciała mnie zaadoptować. Przyjechała do Warszawy, wzięła mi do Łodzi, byłem u nich trzy, trzy miesiące na na Piotrkowskiej 66, I, ale mój wujek, brat mojej mamy przyjechał, wziął mi i, I, I Czerwonego Krzyża przyjechał pa, bardzo dużo żydowskich dzieci. 
do Francji. Tak to było. Przyjechałem do Francji, byłem tam dwa lata. Także takie domy dziecka mniej więcej, ale tam już byli, tam byli już dzieci. Josi był ze mną, ale w tym jego matka była tam, a Ners, ona jego matka ta była, tylko w, to miło w tym pierwszym, tylko w tym drugim domu, gdzie byliśmy, w Ilen Downtown, koło Lyonu. I stamtąd wyjechałem do Izraela. W 38 roku, październik, w październiku 38 roku przyjechałem tutaj. Tutaj jeszcze była wojna. Nie, nie rozumiem tu, to, to, bo tutaj jest e, Shoa, to w jest wszystko Shoa. Ja ci opowiedziałem także, że 25 lat temu, jak chciałem zrobić jakiś board z, z, z nazwiskami naszych ojców i poszłem do Yad Vashem, to powiedzieli, co nagle Katyń, to należy do Shoa. I to wzięło mi jakieś 6 miesięcy, 8 miesięcy, że, i zrozumieli, że to jest tak, że, że, że to jest część od Shoa. Tak, tak to było w 1996 czy 8 roku, 20 kilka lat temu. Ale teraz jest taka, ta, taka tablica tam z, z nazwiskami y, nazwiskami na... Diora, um, so... Um... When was the first time when actually you heard that the name of that name, that word, Katyn? Was that something that was discussed in your family? Uh, not my family, but I will uh, I will tell you. My family knows everything about. Uh, so the first time I heard, no, maybe I read about it. It was in 43, March or, or April. Be, and the reason for it, it was that I was in the Polish part of Warsaw after I ran away from the ghetto. I ran away from uh, on January 43. So I in the I was in the place of my when the girlfriend of my uh, of my uncle or a brother of my mother was there. It was a, a in a small room. And she collected me when I uh, ran away <clears throat> from the ghetto. And uh, my uncle was a little crazy. He was he he, uh, he, uh, he loves to to uh, to uh, read every newspaper. So she, the Lilka, his girlfriend, every day brought him in a newspaper. And one day, one day. It was in the in this newspaper about what happened in Katyn. And the name, there were some names because you know, I think that the, they found the, the German found the grapes uh, very close to Smolensk in this uh, area. And they found uh, people in the, those graves. Uh, and there uh, was a name of my father, Rabiner, without rank, without a uh, name, Emilo, Milek, nothing, only that. So, so I, uh, and I, because I, as you told me, as you read before it, uh, my Polish was very good because my mother teach me the Polish. Uh, I, 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 get there, I could read and uh, write everything. So the, the name was there, and from this time I knew that my father is is dead, is not alive. That's the, the first time. And after when I came to Israel, the his sister came to Israel with her husband in '49, and I was lived with with them, and she that didn't believe what I told her about about her brother, my father. And she sent letters to to Swiss, to the Red Cross, to every place uh, to uh, to to find his, uh, her brother. That's uh, you see. That's that's the first time that I heard the the name Katim. Thank you, thank you, Gora. Um, and look, um, how about you and your family? Was was Katim something that was? discussed or was it part of your discovery of, of late 20s? Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, I grew up in a Polish uh, Catholic household uh, outside of Poland. 
Um, and um, now I, I think the most memorable event uh, that um, made me aware of Katin was uh, the day before my 11th birthday, uh, the Katin Monument was erected in the James and Ethel Park here in Johannesburg. Um, and um, that was a big event. The One of the architects who designed the monument, it's a beautiful monument in the park, was uh, Andrzej Romanovich, who was a friend of our family. And, uh, and then for many years as a teenager and a young adult and later in life, uh, I would go to this monument to um, uh, for the commemoration of the Warsaw flights, because as uh, uh, probably most of you know, uh, South African uh, Air Force squadrons flew over Warsaw during the Warsaw Uprising uh, and uh, dropped supplies to the insurgents. And 69 airmen were killed in that action. It was a pretty suicidal uh, affair. And so uh, every year, the, the Warsaw flights are commemorated, and every year we would meet at the Katyn Memorial uh, to um, uh, commemorate the, the, those brave airmen, South African airmen that lost their lives over Warsaw. So that's where I learned about Katyn. Uh, and uh, and um, it's 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 quite quite symbolic there because you have you have soil from Kat, you have soil from the Povonsky Cemetery, uh, w which commemorates the the uh, fighters of the Warsaw Uprising, one of which was my great un uncle uh, Mietek Mazowiecki, um, and so I, I was linked to that place uh, through through that fact too. Uh, uh, and um, and then there's also soil from the place where Jack Van Aysen's uh, plane was shot down, uh, uh, very near Warsaw Airport, and uh, and I and I met Jack and I got to know him. So yeah, so that was part of of the mix of all of that. But the other very memorable event uh, that uh, I will never forget was meeting one of the few escapees from Katyn. Um, so, uh, you know, with 20, almost 22,000 um, officers murdered, uh, not just officers, also some civilians, uh, but, uh, but uh, 22,000 people murdered in, in Katyn and in, in prisons in the area, but um, 395. 395, so you can work out the, the percentage, it's, it's, it's pretty low, um, actually were transferred to other camps and were not murdered and cut. And one of these 395 was a very famous Polish emigre called um, Józef Czapski, uh, who was the uh, founder of Kultura magazine, who was a a famous painter, a writer, a great intellectual. And I had the honor of meeting Józef Czapski with Adam Michnik in Paris, uh, just after the fall of the Berlin Wall as, uh, as Poland was uh, freeing itself from communist yoke uh, and talking to Czapski about his experiences. Uh, and, and he really did have a most extraordinary life what uh, you may not know is that Chapsky actually looked uh, in vain for Polish officers murdered by the Soviets twice in his life. First in 1920, we went to look for his old Ulan regiment uh, to see what had happened to the officers in Soviet Russia who were left behind after the Russian Revolution. And there he found the Bolsheviks had murdered them in 1920. So he was on this searching for his officers in 1920. And then again, having survived Katyn in, uh, in, 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 in 42, 43, he was again looking for these officers who were murdered in Katyn. So what a remarkable destiny. And he wrote a book called in human land, 
And so that also for me, you know, in my early 20s was a very memorable event uh, around Katyn. And then, uh, and then of course, Andrzej Wajda's film that came out, that was also for me very meaningful. Thank you, Luke. Um, yes, it, it is an um, interesting connection that actually this, this memorial that uh, uh, Luke mentioned in Johannesburg is, uh, if not the first, is one of the first official memorials to the Katyn uh, massacre. And it is uh, here in South Africa, in Johannesburg. Um, and it, it, in Poland, uh, where I'm from, uh, yes, uh, it, it was this this dual situation in which um, in the official books, history books at school, uh, in the official language of the communist government until 1989, until 1990s, cutting did not exist. And if if existed, it was put on on the uh, it was it, it was the Germans, the Nazi Germans that were blamed for that. Uh, that killing for that massacre, um, that change in late 1990s and mid 1990s when Soviet uh, when when the new Russia uh, after the collapse of Soviet uh, Soviet Union uh, recognized for a brief moment of time their responsibility for that crime. Uh, but today, yeah. with with um, the Putin's Russia once again deny any connection and any responsibility for that. For that crime, uh, but of course, in in in, in unofficial discussions in in Poland, both before, uh, I mean, pre nineteen eighty nine, cutting was was very present uh, as a sign, as a symbol of the Soviet crimes on on the poles. Uh, though those discussions, in most cases, would uh, exclude any information, any stories of the Jews. Of the Polish Jews that were killed in that very uh, place. Um, so, so Giora, um, it, you, you've mentioned that it took you uh, some time to convince Yad Vashem to recognize that um, that crime uh, and and the people that that were killed uh, in Katyn. Do you know that today it has something has changed? What's the level of knowledge of that very uh, massacre of that very story in present day Israel? Not nothing. I, uh, I don't think so, because you know uh, my generation, maybe because I told the story in some places, but the new generation they don't, don't know nothing about it. You know we have our Shoah, and we are you are speaking about six, almost uh, <clears throat> almost six hundred po uh, Jewish Polish officer. It was the number was forty four four uh, hundred. But you know what's happened that um, Janina Goldhar and me, we are we were looking for the names because the Polish from uh, the Pola, uh, from Poland from the Mishpa, the Rodzina Katinska, they sent us the cemetery books. You know the cemetery books, all the names. And for example, if you hear the names like, name like. Ben Moshe Wilkomierski, it means that he is a Jewish, but he changed his name to Wilkomierski. So it was very difficult to you know to, to, to look after it. So sure we found four 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 hundred, four hundred and some, but there were I think two hundred more or more officers uh, in the in the in the Polish army. Yeah. And you see in Israel. Uh, when you are, we only when we begin the our small organization, it was thirty years ago. Even it uh, it was Janina Zemian. She was a, a wife of a very or, or of a art, uh, author who uh, wrote the book uh, Hopsis to uh, I don't remember exactly the name. Uh, <laughs> And, and she and she was the first because she was uh, her father her father was killed in Katyn and she started with this project and uh, at the beginning 30 years ago we were something like very close to 40 people in Israel and now we are only three people that's all and you know uh, uh, we are so busy to, to, uh, to my family every know every everyone uh, knows about this Katyn I wrote a book about about what happened to me during the war. So there is Katyn and the picture of my father, everything. 
at the people of Israel, I don't think that they know uh, what's Katyn. And you know, is the population is from over all the world. So you, if you think that someone who came from from Romania or from uh, Yemen knows about Katyn, zero. Okay, it's uh, the, the, it's, it's okay. I, I think that this is normal. It is normal. Thank, thank you, Gera. Um, it, it, interesting because um, uh, this 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 narration in about cutting um, has changed, been changing in Poland, but but it's still uh, while in it is very important part of our national identity. Uh, it's still it's still um, is is rarely known. That uh, once again, among those uh, that were killed there were uh, Polish Jews, uh, which is extremely important because again, it underlines the simple fact that the Polish Jews were part of the nation, uh, were part of the landscape, and they were members of the elite of the army and politicians and journalists and teachers. Um, but 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 and that's why uh, the, the the work that is being done by by the two of you by by uh, you and by Luke and by the foundation that that uh, Luke created is so important because it changed this narration uh, and and unfortunately it's it's still today although uh, um, of course once again cutting is today important part of our Polish identity and it's being commemorated. Uh, um, it is still uh, sometimes that the the Jews are being perceived more as a, as a, as a, a perpetrators in that crime in this in this false idea of Judeo Bolshevism uh, rather than as as a victims of that uh, that system. I, I I read a Polish Canadian professor, Polish Canadian. It was I think five years ago. He wrote that the Jewish. They killed the Polish officers. Why? Because Kaganowicz was number two after Stalin. You see, Polish prof uh, uh, Polish professor. So I I think about it. It is kind. I don't know how to what to say. This is anti-Semitism. Anti yes, I, unfortunately, this is changing also because of the work of of, of the people like Luke and and you, um, and and uh, today Polish authorities and hence once again uh, our recognition to the Polish ambassador are recognizing this this fact that yes, uh, Jews were victims of that very system, uh, and were were um, suffering uh, along the poles in. In this forest of of, of cutting, uh, but 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 it certainly it is a work in progress. And look, because you've been coming in uh, as an insider and outsider, you may uh, perhaps also comment uh, how does it look from your perspective? This 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 change in in the discussion is there a change in the perception of that um, crime? You know, I think I think there's a, a, a tremendous uh, educational. Um, challenge that needs to happen um, because um, people need to uh, get a better understanding of the diversity of the Second Republic. You know, the Second Republic had big Jewish minority, big Ukrainian minority, big Belarusian minority, um, you know, and, and many of the people, uh, many of these minorities were actively engaged as as citizens of the Second Republic um, uh, in social life, in economic life. Um, you know, I just think of my own family. Um, you know, we, 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 we had a, a, a lot of different businesses in Poland. Uh, we, we, buy, we, we had joint ventures with the Polish military. Um, we were very engaged in Polish economic and social life. And and uh, and the uh, the 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 victims of Katyn massacre uh, reflect that uh, reflect that reality of the Second Republic that was crushed by these two great totalitarian empires the the, the Nazi Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia um, and so I think it's a it's a big educational project um, and you know for me. Uh, what's important, of course, the, the big numbers, the 22,000, the hundreds of Jewish officers, but what's also important are the individual stories, you know, the stories of, for example, 
uh, Baruch Steinberg, the uh, the chief rabbi of the Polish army, uh, and the fact that you know he came from a family of rabbis. His uh, his grandfather was a rabbi. His father was a rabbi. Three of his brothers were rabbis. Uh, and yet he was a, a, a fervent supporter of Piłsudski. He he joined the you know the legions um, he, he, when when they were set up. He was uh, involved in uh, the war, uh, the battle for Lvov in um, uh, you know 1918, 1919, uh, and then uh, and then he was part of the. A permanent member of the Polish army from uh, from 1922. You know, so you have uh, you have examples like that, or you have uh, lieutenant colonels um, like uh, Maximilian, um, you know, leading uh, artillery units in the Polish army during the Bolshev during the war with the Bolsheviks, um, and. Um, and and part of the artillery instruction corps, and then uh, heading up the defense of Vov. And uh, uh, so uh, both awarded uh, the highest military honor, Virtuti Militari. So, you know, these stories for me are are, are sometimes more, more meaningful than, um, than just the numbers. You know, the fact that, you know, 14 generals were murdered, 200 pilots were murdered. 300 doctors, 300 doctors were murdered and cut in. You know, by one estimate, 25% of the Polish elite was murdered in this event. So you've got the big numbers, but then you've got these individual stories of, of heroism, of, of Jews being very much engaged in the battle for Polish independence, uh, for the fight against the Bolsheviks in 1920. Uh, part of the military in the 20s and 30s, and then victims of Katyn. Yes, um, you, you're absolutely right. And actually, uh, the name of, of, of um, Rabbi, Chief Rabbi of Polish Army, Baruch Steinberg, is also um, important for me because it, it is actually the first time I read and heard about uh, Katyn uh, was when I also um, saw his name. It is what uh, actually in uh, it was in Polish church in a church in Krakow, uh, a military church, um, which 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 serves to 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 military and uh, and on the walls of that church there are plaques uh, with names of those killed in Katyn. But it's important uh, to to recognize that Katyn is is. While it's a physical place, it also became a symbol of a few other places where those shootings took place. Uh, just like Auschwitz today is a symbol of, of all the concentration and death camps. So uh, uh, it was not only Katyn, but also Kozielsk, Starobielsk, uh, Ostashkov, uh, where, where the killing took place. And in that very church, in that very center of, of Krakow, there was a plaque uh, um, with a name, a Baruch Steinberg, uh, Major, Major. Uh, rabbi, uh, and and for me as, as as a young boy, that was actually for the first time when during those 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 masses when when I was uh, um, thinking about various different things. Often, often I would go and read those names and read uh, the names of the people that were listed, and among them there were Polish Jews. Um, so 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 so, and again that you um, that uh, 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 yeah, you, uh, Giora, you already mentioned uh, that 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 a bit. But how do you think the Holocaust remembrance uh, impact the the remembrance of the Katyn massacre? What do you mean by that? that whether I mean whether do you think if there is a uh, 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 and look, that's also a question to you whether there is a room. I think, within... I think I think Jakub, I think that one of the ways in which it impacted it very meaningfully is that most of the Jewish captain families were murdered. So where you, uh, during people that had survived the Shoah and who could speak about their fathers who had been murdered in, in Katyn. Because most of the officers of, uh, this is the, the tragedy of it all, that most of the 
the families of those officers ended up being murdered in the show. Yeah, but you know, it's very hard to, to me to connect the Shoah, the, the Shoah to Katyn for me, because the, it's only the, 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 the reason is the number. The number, you, uh, you, uh, if, you are, if you are speaking about the Jewish officers, yeah, I, I'm speaking about 600 Jewish officers and about 6 million, 6 million in the Shoah. You, you see the, 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 the difference between that. So it's, uh, you see, the people don't know nothing, almost now, I'm sure, almost not nothing, yeah, about the, about, about the Katyn in Israel. Once there was an ambassador in, uh, in Israel, a, po a Polish uh, ambassador, he invited me and he, has, he had some ideas how to spread the information about Katyn in all the schools in Israel. It was uh, kind of uh, absurd to me. Yeah, you see. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I don't know. But just a minute, you know that Vaida, the, the film, the movie, Katyn, Vaida, his father was too Jewish. You, 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 you knew it? Okay. Because, yeah. So that's the reason that they, uh, I think that maybe that's the reason that he made, made this film. It is very good, yes. And then I, yeah. I, I can recommend Thank you, it. thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes, certainly, uh, certainly it's it's worth uh, worth seeing. And Andrzej Vajda is, is no doubt, I mean, late Andrzej Vajda uh, is one of the most important Polish uh, film, film directors. Um, and, and, and so look, uh, and, and, and Giora, I mean, how uh, has the legacy of, of, of cutting massacre uh, impacted you and, and, and in a wider sense, subsequent generations? Um, is, there is, is, is there something that, that, that has been the trauma or pain has been, been passed on from generations to you? You know, from, from my side, uh, <clears throat> I want to make two comments. The first one is that, you know, I just find that uh, Katyn should be a moment of uh, for unity of the Polish nation because it's a national tragedy. Uh, half the officer corps, it's, a, it's an exceptional event, even in military history globally, that half the officer corps gets murdered in, 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 in a matter of a few weeks with a shot to the head. It's, it's, it's just an incredible event. Uh, and so it should be a, a, a moment of national unity uh, where all uh, all the components of the po of the Polish nation are, are recognized and honored. Uh, and, and you will know this, Jakub, what is very sad is that our tragedy uh, where 96 uh, Polish humanitarians, you know, politicians, the president, Lech Kaczynski, the, uh, the chief of the general staff, were killed in that unfortunate um, uh, plane accident, it became uh, also a, a point of massive political polarization with the, the believers in the conspiracy theory, you know, not able to have a rational discussion with, with the rest of society. Um, it's, 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 it's very much like what we see with, with the MAGA crowd in, in the USA. And that that is very sad in a way because it should always be a national tragedy that that really goes beyond any uh, political divisions of any kind. So I, I feel some sadness around that that it became so politicized. Um, uh, but but for me, what's important uh, is that uh, unfortunately, you know, Giora and Miriam and Yossi are quite elderly, and we of course wish them. Uh, Dollat but uh, but we but uh, reality is that we need to we need to think about the future, and that's why uh, I decided to set up this foundation with Taya uh, to um, uh, and you, Jakub, to uh, just promote the, the 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 memory of these brave uh, Polish Jewish officers. Uh, so that, you know, even when the descendants are gone, uh, the memory persists 
because it is a, a beautiful uh, sign of, of the sacrifice that these officers made for the Second Republic, which despite all its flaws and all its issues, was a moment of, of, of relative freedom and, and development for, for Poland after, after the partitions and before Nazi occupation and then uh, Soviet domination. Look, I want to, I want to, to ask you a question. What, uh, uh, there is a, it was once a uh, Rodzina Katyńska. I remember I came in the 90s to Poland. It was Rodzina Katyńska. Uh, yes, and they, they, they spoke with me. And, uh, so, and our old small organization in the 19, we have uh, some contacts with them. But now I don't know if they still they say that they, they but you if uh, if is uh, with your organization with your what you've uh, done maybe you have a contact with this Rogina Katinska because as I know they are over all the world I met some uh, some uh, some of them in London I met some of them in uh, what was was in New York the uh, yes. Uh, of the people of those people so maybe this is something that you can connect with with them with that's de that's what, definitely what, the intention what, what, definitely the intention to connect with them and the other intention is to also uh develop a bit of a virtual presence so we've set up this instagram site mm -hmm. which is like a virtual graveyard which has the names of the, the officers that you've identified. And we thought it was very important to do this because we didn't want the, the work that you and Janina Goldhard did to go to waste, to get lost, to get forgotten. We wanted those names to actually uh, exist, if, if not physically, then uh, virtually. And that's why we set up this... Uh, this this uh, this kind of virtual graveyard. We actually haven't found any other virtual graveyards. I don't know if this is like the first of its kind or not. It's not really important, but we we set it up, and it has all the names. Um, and obviously, if there are any errors that have crept in, please tell us. We'll 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 fix them. But it has all the names of of the officers that that were on your list, Kiora, and then it has some really very moving photographs like the the photographs of of uh, Barol Steinberg Rabbi Barol Steinberg the photographs of of the the lieutenant colonels that I talked to you about Maximilian Landau and Jerzy Zapolski uh, who you know were very senior uh, Polish army officers um it's 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 really um it, it it's really um I think uh, a way of commemorating these officers, uh, so people can find these names. Maybe some family members will find the names. And there's so many stories. For example, from my uh, mom's hometown of Kutno, we found uh, the name of Jakub Landberg, who was a doctor who was killed in uh, in in Kutno. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, Bernard Katz, uh, connected me uh, with uh, the son of Richard Stern, who also had a really interesting story he he was a polish jew who spent 18 months in siberia uh, then managed to get out with the anders army and then actually fought in monte cassino mm -hmm. and the graves of of of, of jewish uh, soldiers and officers in monte They're cassino, monte and, then cassino have, yes. and then we have uh, pictures of uh, of 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 uh, of emil rabina uh, we have uh, pictures of other uh, uh, Polish officers, uh, and so I think this is also our way of of just um, of commemorating these officers, of not allowing their names to be forgotten, uh, of acknowledging the heroism, and of saying something important about about the Second Republic, which was. Uh, 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 place uh, of diversity, where you had uh, uh, people of different faiths and different ethnic groups working together. Uh, we don't ignore 
all the anti-Semitism. We don't ignore all the difficulties, but uh, it was uh, it was uh, a place which engendered the loyalty of of groups of from very different religious and ethnic persuasions. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Luke. And I think there is there is something uh, something uh, one more thing that this 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 um, virtual virtual graveyard is is doing. It is it is also providing this commemoration, which is not um, religio ethnic. I mean, which not does not narrowing down uh, the, the 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 symbols to 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 a Catholic ones, uh, as you, you you as you all see in the, the the memorial in in Johannesburg. Just like many other uh, uh, memorials devoted to that very crime, uh, use uh, the symbolic of cross, uh, but uh, there is no Star of David. Yeah, uh, there is no and, and... reference to the simple fact that not all of those people were were of Jewish faith. They were all Poles, including Polish Jews, but not all of them were and, of Polish, and, of, of religious, that's of, of Catholic religion. That's absolutely right, and and that's why if you stop on the on the logo that. Uh, that uh, Jackie uh, designed for us for the foundation. You can see the the red and white of the Polish flag, and then uh, the Star of David there. I think it's 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 a very beautiful logo that that she designed there for us. Uh, I think a deeply meaningful one, and uh, and certainly what we want to do. One of the things that we want to do um, uh in the in future is look to try and convince uh, the authorities be they uh, city authorities or national authorities to also put uh, a jewish symbol uh on some of the Katyn memorial sites so that this uh, the, the reality of the jewish sacrifice is also acknowledged so that's going to be a, a battle that we'll be taking up uh, in, in future. Uh, we also need to acknowledge uh, that not only were there something like 100,000 um, Polish Jews that fought in the Polish army in the September campaign against Nazi Germany. So there were about a million Polish soldiers that were mobilized and 100,000 of them were Polish Jews. Uh, not only do we need to recognize all the Polish Jews that were in the Anders army, uh, including one very famous one, uh, Menachem Begin, who, uh, who, who left the Soviet Union, got to Palestine, and then also those that continued, some of them stayed in Palestine, but some continued on to fight in the Italian campaign, um, and in, in Monte Cassino. And then, of course, we must recognize also uh, the Jews, uh, the Polish Jews in the Polish Soviet army of Berlinger, because, you know, it's it's easy to forget their sacrifice too. Um, and and there, uh, there were uh, many Jews there as well. So I think it's a, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a layered, multidimensional story. Thank you, thank you, Luke. Um, and and hopefully uh, through the work of 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 people like you and the foundation that you created, by also other institutions and the Polish uh, authorities, this will will be possible. And 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 uh, the inclusion of this Jewish uh, suffering into this 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 wider uh, narrative of uh, will will uh, indeed. Uh, Take place, and um, we will see questions. But before maybe we'll get uh, to those, um, maybe we can uh, actually play um, some more videos prepared by by Luke and his team uh, and by the foundation. That will first of all show uh, some of the things that the foundation is doing, and also uh, voices of two other uh, uh, people that are very closely connected to uh, to that crime. So um, let me start with the first first video.
A virtual cemetery is essentially a digital platform that is accessible to people around the world and in this case that would be Instagram. This project was originally action to commemorate the Polish Jewish officers. When you visit the site where the family members can you know go back and look at records that information is accessible and gives that feeling of honor, respect and dignity. It is very complicated for me because I don't, I don't know my father at all. I didn't know him. And nobody uh, told me about him. When the war was destroyed, my father was mobilized. He was a lekarzem rezerwy i więcej nie spotkaliśmy jego. My father for me is something that I, I don't know. In fact he goes, that's all. What I remember is only a kind of silhouette of him. That's all. Dear friends, I'm very, very happy to be here with you to launch the Katten Foundation, the Jewish families who um, are going to be preserving the memory of the, the Jewish victims of Katten for future generations. There were Catholics, there were Jews, there were Orthodox, Polish citizens that fought for Poland. And this is the truth that must be told. Oblivion is the final indignity and we don't want that to happen. So we're uh, encouraging all of all of you to to um, look it up um, on Instagram and soon enough there's going to be also a dedicated website uh, for that project. Um, so so you'll be able to to commemorate those victims uh, and learn more about their their lives. Um, let me share uh, uh, two, one more, two more uh, videos, um, which will bring uh, again uh, two other stories um, to us. Please just give me one second. Katini again taking into account the, the, the whole event of, of the 20th century with the First and Second World War um, in proportion and with a spam uh, of attention that you can have to any specific event, uh, especially when you don't have a good PR for that event. You don't have the hero that knows how to tell the story. Um, Katyn uh, was almost, the story disappeared and for years nobody spoke about it at all. Uh, it only in um, much later uh, became uh, a story or we realized the whole story of uh, what happened there. He wasn't bothered from that. That's, uh, look, he, General, he killed more people than the Germans. 20 millions, uh, mainly Russians, of course, but they, uh, he's one of the biggest uh, murderers in history. The story of the, the event in Katyn, the, the murders of uh, all those uh, Polish um, officers, uh, is not known well, uh, it's not hide, but it's not part of the, the ethos that we are telling our children. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to be here today with you uh, to commemorate the victims of the 
uh, cutting strategy. Uh, the Polish Embassy in Tel Aviv has been working uh, for many years uh, and supporting the cutting families uh, of Jewish descent here in Israel. It is our tradition that we gather uh, every year to lay flowers and to commemorate the victims of cutting uh, at this memorial which um, is important for um, for the history and the common past of Poles, Jews and all the those who served uh, Poland and uh, who lost their lives in this tragic events in Katyn, Smolensk, uh, Starobielsk and Ostaszku. We are so occupied with so many other stories, especially here in Israel. Uh, you know, we just had the Holocaust. Uh, and, and that was, in the beginning, stories that we didn't know how to deal with. People didn't speak about it. Among all those events that we had to deal with and to remember and to commemorate, it seems that we didn't have room for the tragedy of Katyn. It's a pity, it's sad, and it should be, but that's the way it is. Um, so you, you see that again, the, the work of the foundation, uh, and the work of people like Giora and Luke, uh, is, is terribly important, um, for all of, all of us. Uh, we have a few questions, uh, and, and still a, a bit of a time. Um, so if our, uh, speakers wouldn't mind, I'll ask, uh, uh, I'll read some of those questions, um, and, uh, and ask you to, to comment on uh, on these. Uh, were the Jewish victims uh, singled out in any way for being Jews uh, during the um, during the uh, massacre or whether they were uh, identified s separately? So again, why why whether they were killed because of their Jewishness or because of their uh, belonging to a particular group. So, uh, so uh, as far as I know, they, they weren't singled out at all. They were killed as Polish officers. Uh, there was also the question why they were killed. And I think the simple answer to that is because um, they were killed by an order of the Soviet Politburo signed on the 5th of March, 1940 as uh, essentially counter-revolutionaries. They felt that these people represented the elite of Polish society and would uh, always be leading initiatives to try and resist uh, Soviet domination and uh, the imposition of the communist system on Poland. So I think that was the, 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 the reason they were killed. Um, and in terms, uh, I just want to, I just want to quote a little snippet that I did find about the Jews in in uh, in Starobielsk uh, in um, e, e, before they were killed in Katyn, that was uh, written by Bronisław Muinarski uh, in his book in Soviet Captivity, where he says. Uh, and and it's 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 just one sentence, but it's quite moving. He says, "On Friday evenings, we gathered outside a dilapidated shed, where hundreds of Jews, led by Chaplain Dr. Steinberg, said fervent prayers in Hebrew." And of course, um, a, a few weeks later, uh, they were murdered. Thank you, Luke. Um, it's Luke. They, uh, they were killed because they were Polish officers. That's all. Um, so, so thank you, Luke. Uh, thank you, Giora. I see that some of the questions been been also already answered um, in the chat. Um, are there any final uh, remarks, comments you'd like to make before we will uh, finish up this uh, this um, recording this this program? 
Uh, I, I want to um, just um, uh, read from a, a short recollection by Yanina Goldhar. She published uh, a book called My Story in 2012. Uh, and this is uh, how she experienced the tragedy, the cutting tragedy, uh, how she found uh, out about her, her, her father's demise in, in cutting. Uh, so it goes like this. We spent those days waiting for a message from the father. If I remember correctly, we received the first signal that he had survived in October 1939. We were visited by one of the soldiers who served in his unit and was taken prisoner by the Soviets. The Soviets released all the soldiers but kept the officers. Our father sent us a message that we were fine. My mom was pleased that he was detained by the Soviets because she thought this was better for a Jew than being arrested by the Germans. One day in December, we were delighted to receive a postcard from Starobiel's camp and then another one in which he wrote he was fine and asked for our photos. He also wrote that he had my teddy bear. The third postcard was written in early March. It came at the same time as a return parcel with photos that my mom had sent. We were upset by this, but my mom thought that he must have been transferred somewhere. At that time, we could not even imagine that he was really dead. Hmm. Uh, just a minute, just for the mother of Janina Goldhar, she was the oldest widow, the oldest widow of Katyn. She hmm. died at, at, she was 112. Okay, just to add this. Thank you. And and since since we're, we're bringing voices, uh, maybe we still have time for one last uh, video um, of Miriam Baram um, that we can we can uh, play now. And again, if there are further questions, please write them in the chat. My name is Miriam Baram. And from my from the home, from my parents' home, I am Lebenbaum. And this is the name that my father is written in the book of the Katyn uh, officers that uh, were killed in uh, in the camps. Uh, I think that I am the youngest uh, orphan in this uh, project because I was ten months when the war started. What I know that my father was, was a Polish officer in the army. Uh, and I, what I heard about that he was killed in the war. How and where and uh, I, I, they didn't tell me. Um, it is very complicated for me because I don't, I don't know my father at all. I didn't know him and nobody uh, told me about him. They didn't speak. My grandparents, uh, they lost three sons. We were, during the war, we were in Uzbekistan. We ran away to the east and uh, spent the years of the war in Uzbekistan. My grandparents came separately and my mother came separately. Each of us came separately and I don't know why. I was a child, nobody told me what, why. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, my mother sh went to live in uh, Warsaw. She found a flat, a, a place to live and to work. And, uh, and uh, my grandparents, they found me in the uh, home of children. And, and I was with them during the, it was about two, on, two or two and a half years and uh, when my grandfather heard about uh, Israel, uh, there is a, a state uh, of Israel, he decided that he is going to Israel, nowhere else, only to Israel. So uh, this are all things that when I grow up, 
after my grandfather died and uh, after the, the, my grandmother died, uh, I started to make my, my puzzle by myself from stories that I heard, that I remember, that I knew and, and find out. Uh, and then when, because in Israel we heard about the Katin in only in the end of the, of the when the uh, when Russia uh, fell when the yes, communism the USSR collapsed. yes so it was uh, 89 or 90, yeah. or 90 in this time and uh, I was wow with all the 20,000 names uh, of the uh, officers that were dead and uh, I find my, my father's name. So it was uh, the first time that I saw, how do in, in, in Hebrew it is uh, black on white, my father's name as a, as a dead person, because before it was only stories. In Israel, the process of Katin is not known, uh, not uh, when I say sometimes I, my father was killed in Katyn, ah, oh, what it is, what it is, uh, it's not really the Holocaust, it's not the same. Uh, and uh, if you make things here that more people will know about it, it uh, I think it will be very good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, um, look, uh, thank you, Giora, um, thank you, Tiny Aids, um, Mary, um, thank you all for, for joining us during that uh, program. Thank you all who participated and joined us from various places. I've seen we had people from, from South Africa, from Israel, from US, uh, from Poland. Um, I think uh, this is this moment in time when when uh, that is happening around the world. Um, I'm glad that we also find a second to think to commemorate the victims of that particular uh, crime, uh, um, Polish Jews that were killed, along with the Polish Catholics, uh, Polish Greek Orthodox, as as Luke said, uh, killed in Katyn uh, and other places in April and May of 1940. Um, Thank you all. Um, have a good evening. Uh, have a good night. Um, and I hope we will uh, meet again at some other uh, programming organized by uh, either by Cape Town Holocaust and Genocide Center or our partner institutions in Johannesburg and Durban. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jakub, for organizing this event. Thank you, Giora. Thank you, Luke. I'll take you to Cuba. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, 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 the program was recorded, so should you like to rewatch it uh, or share it with, with friends, uh, the link will be uh, sent out to everybody uh, soon. And it will also be available at the YouTube channel of Cape Town Holocaust and Genocide Center. Um, thank you Thanks. all again. Good night. Uh, good night.